Hello and welcome back to Speed Demon Painting. Today we are taking a look at the Beta Imperium Order of Battle version 3.04. All Orbats were recently updated to version 3.04 and I have a video up, linked in the description below, about the gen general changes that affect everyone, but this one will go more into the changes that come to the Imperium, what has been buffed, what has been nerfed and what uh, has been changed slightly and tweaked. I plan to do these sorts of guides for every other faction, so if you're looking forward to yours, make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for those future updates. First of all, changes to the special rules. Um, there was a change in uh, the Imperium faction quality called Voltaic. Uh, it used to be that you automatically shut down shield generators uh, or uh, storm generators if you hit them with a critical hit. The critical hit would then be converted to um, a generator shutdown. That has been changed, um, mostly because of the Sultanate. Uh, quite a few of their portal generators, which was a bit of an important mechanic for the Sultanate, were also found on ships that had a shield generator and they could almost never get their uh, portals off if they were facing Imperium because they were just shutting those down left, right and center. So this ability got a change to make it more useful overall, not just for shield generators um, and not quite as punishing for some specific factions. Now if the initial target has one or more online generators, each action dice pool with this quality gains plus one action die in total. So it sort of offsets the shield generator slightly. Another great change that I found very uh, welcome was Acceptable Attrition. Now it is found in this uh, Orbat and it is for the Hoth Heavy Corvettes, which uh, drastically improves the way that they play, more on which later. The other ability here, Blitch Slash, was something that was previously mentioned with the giant Stompy bots, the um, um, Hochmeisters, uh, but it is now a general rule because it can be found on two types of uh, robots. Uh, it is, It has been buffed, it used to be auto-cancelable by your opponent, but it is still a very strong ability, so you now need a Valor card with a value of at least 40, and this can be um, manipulated by a Valorous Conduct if you so desire. It has now also been reworded and clarified to say that the second ram that uh, Blitzschlag does uh, has to be against the same or a new point of impact within 3 inch of the first. Which means that this is one of the few bots in the game that will still be able to do a double ram. One against the initial target that it moves against and then another one within 3 inch of that one or the same tar target should you so desire. The action dice pool was clarified for the second ram is the same as the first, so all of your speed buffs and everything are taken into account. The model may not make any further movement disactivation if it uses this rule, so no more disengaging and continue on, on your journey if you want uh, to use this ability. Overall though, pretty significant buff, if only for the fact that they were allowed to keep their double ram as opposed to most other factions. And speaking of uh, different bots from other factions, there's been a significant buff to the Freya array. Um, the first thing is a bit of a downside. This rule cannot be used if the model has a generator offline critical damage marker. So it is a type of generator, technically. But enemy units cannot be deployed within 10 inch of this model. That's a really big deal because most of those uh, ramming bots only move 6 inch. And that means that you can completely shut them off by having a Freya array near to the flagship that you want to protect. It's a very good anti-submarauder tech now. And uh, it was previously not always worth considering taking this option, but uh, right now I would definitely consider one of them at least. A rule that is completely new is the uh, Draugr rule, which is mostly found on Scandinavian units. Models in this unit with this rule ignore the effects of the emergency disorder, so that's already off to a good start, but they still count as having the disorder. Models with this rule may support an assault when they are within 3 inch of the assaulting model, not just the model being assaulting, uh, being assaulted, I should say, which is a bit pretty big deal because your own positioning will be rather easy to make one uber assault if you so desire. There is however a downside to this one as well. Models with this rule that have one or more critical damage markers cannot remove levels of disorder so you have to repair your crits first before you can start removing the levels of disorder. And then finally in Troja Fest the thing that the Bavarians had is uh, totally not pack hunter now. No need to read the whole text, it pretty much is just Pack Hunter with a limitation to the Bavarian keywords, but you can't really mix them anyway, so that's a moot point. 
Another important change is the change to Pycrete construction. That used to be mentioned on all of the cards from all the Ice Maiden variants, but these have all now been rolled into general buffs. And the Pycrete construction now basically combines lumbering, with a big difference, because it's a drift of only one, and does not suffer disorder from collisions. All gunnery targets may however reroll blank results on the action dice, so that's the same as gunnery, but even slower. However, you'll find that a lot of these Ice Maiden variants have had a, their speed increased a bit, just so that they're not an uber slow mess on the, on the table. Any additional levels of disorder, once at Chaos and Disarray, are ignored rather than causing damage, which is also a good thing. And during deployment, uh, this uh, model may stick out a bit of the deployment zone, uh, as long as uh, the back of the model is touching it. The Ice Maiden is such a huge model that it can actually go past that 8-inch deployment zone. The big thing missing from this rule, and that's why there is buff written on top of it, is that they no longer receive extra damage when taking catastrophic hits. And that was usually the thing that uh, made your Ice Maidens melt quite fast, and that is now gone, so a significant buff to those flagships. There were also some changes to uh, the Storm Generator. Uh, it's slightly nerfed, because now in the shooting phase it can be shot as a shooting attack using the Lightning Profile weapon, that's the same. It has a 360 degree line of sight and has to target things within 20 inch, that is the same. But the attack now only ignores Shield Generators and Shroud Generators, that is a nerf, because it used to also ignore Storm and Guardian Generators, so hooray, a small buff to the crown indirectly through this one. Shooting attacks against a model with the Storm Generator reroll heavy hits, that's the same as it was before. But the thing that is now added is if a battle ready model has a Storm Generator, it gains plus two to its assault action dice pool. But that's not really a buff, that used to be something that was incorporated in the Lightning Assault rule, and that is a special rule that has been completely eliminated from this Orbat, so that deserves a bit of uh, explanation as well. Pretty much every single ship in the Imperium list used to have the uh, Lightning Assault. Now, it's a rule that gives you additional dice when you uh, were doing an assault. In its very earliest iteration, it would count every Voltaic or Arc weapon, and you had get plus one in your assault for every weapon you had that way. But that was a bit of a, first of all, a lot of counting work, so it slowed down the game significantly. And second of all, you had people just trying to ram as many Voltaic and Arc weapons on there as they possibly could to get the most out of it. It was then changed to a more static, as many dice you gain as you have mass rule, which was a bit boring, let's not uh, mince words about that one, um, and it was a bit silly really, because why not just add it into the fray as well, uh, which is what sort of has happened. Some ships have gotten some compensation in the fray value, whilst others have not. So you'll see me saying, or you'll hear me saying quite often, this ship overall comes out better compared to Lightning Assault or worse. The Imperium as a whole is a bit of a mixed bag, whether or not they came out better or worse with Assaults now. Um, they used to all get bonuses, even things like Conrad's for instance, as, uh, carrier ships, which is absolutely bonkers, and those have not gotten a fray buff, while other things that are really meant to do Assaults will have seen their fray increase by a bit. So it's very much mixed bag for this rule. It is double mixed bag for this rule, because Lightning Assault has been partially replaced by two rules, Voltaic Deck Sweepers and Veteran Voltmeisters. Now, the alphabet forces Voltaic Deck Sweepers to be mentioned last, I'm starting with that one though, because any battle-ready model with this rule, attempting an assault, gains a bonus to its assault action dice pool equal to the target's mass value. So that's a big deal, if you're trying to assault big ships, you're going to get extra dice, because you're... Uh, guys are all armed with uh, Voltaic weapons that arc over to the next crowd and that just scales up as you have more and more crew members. Supporting or crippled models cannot use this rule however. And then the vault veteran Voltmeisters, huh, they sort of use that rule as well because if it has the Voltaic deck sweepers then you gain an additional plus one die to the assault action dice pool um, even if the model is crippled. So that's, uh, that's always a small little buff. In addition, the unit will also gain the Voltaic quality um, if it has these veteran uh, Voltmeisters. Now you have to remember, Voltaic has been changed so that can too give you a bunch of extra, or rather one extra dice, if the shipping uh, that you're targeting has a uh, uh, has a operational generator on it.
You will see these two rules largely used on Teutonic units, uh, although some Prussian ones get it as well. There's another rule that buffs assaults, and in other ways other shooting, and that's the Wolves of the Sea. Those are commonly found on uh, the Scandinavian units, and uh, of course the mercenaries based on them. This is a pretty big, significantly buffed ability, because now crippled models in this unit with this rule use the battle ready value for all their weapons. That used to only be the lead weapon, so they've gotten quite a bit better when they were crippled before. Other than that, when they are making um, or supporting, but not supporting rather, an assault, this model gains a bonus equal to its action dice pool equal to its mass. So those are looking at their own mass. Start Things start getting really, really strong if these things get combined though, and we will see a few ships that actually do that. But yeah, overall, the Scandinavians still are the ones that have Wolves of the Sea in general, and therefore are now the more standout units in terms of assault. Uh, it was a bit of an identity crisis for the Scandinavians, because, uh, you know, both the, the Prussian half of the force was pretty good in assault, all of them, right? That has been reduced to some of them are pretty good in assault. Uh, and that mean, meant that the Scandinavians were sort of left behind as a sort of a, a weak faction that not everyone was taking because, you know, they had uh, less toughness, they were more one-dimensional than the Prussians, and uh, this uh, Orbat does fix that. But again, that does mean that some of the Imperium Prussian units have been nerfed in terms of assault abilities. In terms of changes to the uh, different battle fleets, there are not that many of them, although we do finally have a fleshed out Scions of Jutland battle fleet that have been uh, added to them, so that is uh, pretty fun to see. There has been a quite important tweak to the Prussian Iron Skies battle fleet. Um, it used to be that you have to take four of these uh, Zeppelin class that has changed. Zeppelins, as a bit of a spoiler alert, have also gotten slightly cheaper, so you can actually start using this one now without it being your entire force, essentially. It's been toned down to be three Zeppelins now, one of them being the flagship, and then you have to include two other ones, but you can still include two other extra ones. In case you were mad enough to actually buy five of them, you still can. And the new deal now is that only two of those Zeppelin classes can get unexpected arrival and they have to pay 20 points per unit to then actually use this ability. Uh, still quite strong, especially when we're looking at the new patrons, but uh, yeah, toned down and generally more usable now. The Teutonic Advanced Battle Fleet was also changed. This used to have a command override buff that has now been changed to one surface unit in the battle fleet of mass 3 or less may have the unexpected arrival rule if you pay plus 20 points. So apparently they have unlocked the secrets of just uh, giving all of the crew some diving equipment and taking them under the sea and just popping up somewhere, which I think is really, really cool. It is the Advanced Battle Fleet anyway, so you're expecting the most high-tech things to be found in that one. The Teutonic Colossus battle fleet has also been tweaked. That used to give you an elite crew bonus. That was free, by the way. Now it gives all the units in the battle fleet the Voltaic Deck Sweeper and Veteran Voltmeister that were discussed earlier. That, however, does cost 10 points per model now. So um, maybe there should be an option to just not have that one as an extra points cost. It would be a shame if those uh, you know, extra 10 points would sort of block you from building uh, your force as well. And then finally, the fully new ones, that's the, Zion, uh, the Scions of uh, Jutland uh, Mercenary Battle Fleet. Uh, these models have not been released yet, but I expect that they will be coming soon-ish. Uh, it's going to have an Asgard or Valhalla class as the uh, position trait. The Asgard, if I'm not mistaken, is a carrier variant that's coming, and the Valhalla fast uh, Dreadnought is the one that moves quite fast. The Asgard is not mentioned yet in this Orbat, so when that release comes, we might actually see an update to this one just to make sure that that ship can be used. You also have to include one surface unit and that has to be a Gifion class. Can't tell you anything about it yet, not in this orbat, again will have to be updated. You can include up to two submerged units, one of them uh, can be or you can spam Einherjar class which is a new type of uh, Colossus uh, based off of uh, the Hochmeister kit, from the looks of it, but maybe with some additional parts, who knows. And they must include 
one extra unit of aerial units. Now there is going to be the Valkyrie rotor, because that is the only Scandinavian aerial unit, but you have to include it if you're getting the mercenary faction. The patrons for the Imperium are pretty good, if you ask me. The first one is uh, an interesting one, because that's one that sort of has to make its victory points back. You pay two victory points for the Tainted Kriegsminister, and once per round, you may replace the victory condition of any of your victory and valor cards. That has a value of 30 or higher, so only the good cards, quote-unquote, to just be destroy any unit this turn and score plus one victory point when you do so. So as long as you manage to keep destroying something and then keeping a card back, a high value card, then you will be earning up to five victory points during a game. So this one is odd because it, uh, it costs you victory points, but in the long run, you're supposed to make more of them that way. The Witch of Jutland is one that allows you to just basically take as many mercenary fleets as you want in your force. She costs uh, one victory point in order to manipulate your force in that way. And that's great because the Draugr rule, that is the basic rule that you get from uh, that detachment, I didn't quite discuss it that much, that rule does not require you to be ahead in victory points. So you can take this one and still benefit from the mercenary rule in this uh, faction. And then the one that is absolutely insanely good, if you ask me, is Anna von Malberg, the Teutonic Grandmaster. She does clock in at that massive three victory points, but she allows you to have a mass three or less unit that enters unexpected arrival, or via unexpected arrival, to just fire their weapons at their battle-ready profile instead of the crippled profile. That means that she's an excellent match for that Teutonic advanced fleet that we've seen. Or, when we were talking about it earlier, that Iron Skies battle fleet is really going to match up very, very nicely. In addition, anything with the veteran Voltmeister rule will get two extra dice instead of one when making that assault. So the assault that ensues is going to be even heavier if uh, Anna von Malberg, the great Teutonic Grandmaster, is in your force. And then before we get into the ships, let's take a look at the weapons uh, reference as well. Um, you will see that there is a new weapon called the Colossal Hand Weapon, just ramming 14 and voltaic, so slightly different compared to uh, the uh, the old Zweihander Greatsword all the way at the bottom. It uh, basically has a different number of dice to go with them. Other than that, the Rüdiger Autocannon is the big loser for this, uh, this update. It is down one die in uh, its support value. You can't get much lower than that. But unfortunately, that does mean that if some of these units that are equipped with them are hit very, very hard, because that means that you're supporting at only half the rate that you previously were, and that is very noticeable. Here's a bit of a compensation, though. The Übervolt Veerding, which was technically found on the medium blimps, has now significantly been buffed in terms of their weapon profiles as well. So uh, I think that was largely because a lot of people were just spamming the mass 1 flyers instead of opting for a lot of the mass 2 ones. Um, so yeah, a bit of give and take there, um, making, uh, or making the flyer department slightly more interesting, let's say. Now, onto the flagships, and I'm going to use the Elector Battleship it hasn't changed all that much, but I'm going to show this one what the consequences are of it losing lightning profile. As you can see, the fray value has been buffed slightly by plus one. However, no lightning assault means that usually when it was assaulting, it was getting three extra dice because of its mass. That's now down to plus one, so it's definitely worse than it ever was before. There's also a slight tweak that I'm not going to discuss every single time for their generator swaps. That's the same across all factions. It's down to minus five if you want to swap a weapon out for a generator. The assault story, though, for the Elector Battleship isn't the end of the world, because if you liked your uh, Elector Battleship as an assaulting vessel, you can still take Voltaic Tech Sweepers for plus five points per model. Meaning, if you're assaulting a Mass 2 ship, you're coming out the same as it was before, and if you're assaulting something mass 3 or bigger, you're actually gaining dice compared to what it was before. That's why I said at the start that assault for the Imperium is a bit of a mixed bag. Sometimes you have to pay some extra points for it, um, some ships come out better, some ships will come out worse, depending on the circumstances. 
We see a similar story in the named variant, the SMS Brandenburg, also having only um, one extra in fray, but uh, getting Voltaic Deck Sweepers as standard on this one for the 250 points, which I personally think is a good deal, because uh, compared to the Elector, you're getting two Gustav Bombards and a Fortunes of Warship. Uh, along with it, I think the SMS Brandenburg is uh, very much an interesting ship for the commander building a smaller force. The Ice Maiden definitely loses out when it comes to Assault, but let's be honest, that's not really what you were taking it for as well. And with the changes to Pycrete, I say that this ship comes out way better than before. And it's an absolute magnet of firepower, of enemy firepower, uh, but it can take it way better than ever before. Also, Pycrete construction, like I said, uh, reduces the drift to just one inch, and you now have uh, 5 speed, which is up by plus 2, so compared to the lumbering it had before, you're not really losing out on anything. If anything, your ship has become slightly more maneuverable, because it can uh, oh, it's only stuck with that 1 inch drift, so you can start turning earlier than ever before, so don't fret about that one. In general though, quite a lot of these big flagships have seen points reductions across all Orbats. That's not the case for the Ice Maiden, Dreadnought, Supercarriers and all of its variants. They have remained much the same in terms of points, they were in a good spot as it was, but they have been buffed slightly so they don't sink quite as, uh, as fast, so still a bit of a buff to those big flagships for the Imperium as well. Everything that has been said for the Ice Maiden can be said as well for the uh, two named variants, so I'm not going to go over them for too long. A new entry, which isn't exactly new, it's now just a separate entry, is the Kaiser Pattern Heavy Battleship. The Elector class no longer has this upgrade mentioned there, it is now a separate value. It uh, gets plus two uh, fray, that doesn't quite compensate for its uh, battle-ready uh, value, but it gets Voltaic Deck Sweepers as... Uh, sort of a swap out, so it's definitely a winner compared to what it was before in terms of the assault assault output. The only downside is that its actual real value is now 5 points more because of the cheap, or the less cheap I should say, swap out for that useless uh, heavy fold gun battery that only shoots in the aft arc. Not a biggie. The named variant has also been tweaked, the SMS Tirpitz, it has been given an experimental shroud generator, which uh, still provides you shrouded to shooting attacks, obscured of course, but as a special operation it can also be removed from the play area and placed within a new point within 5 inch of its original position, but if you're doing so you're not allowed to change your facing, um, and it cannot of course be ex uh, changed out for anything else. Really really cool rule, especially because this ship has now been given uh, command codes, it used to have priority signals, and it's one of those ships that actually gains a bit of extra oomph in assault because of the tweak to voltaic deck sweepers and the additional fray as well, making it better than before. And if you're creeping up 5 inch faster every single turn, if that experimental shroud generator is online, this really is a scary ship for assaults as well, and one that can keep up with quite a lot of your other ships, uh, so those command codes can be spread out quite well in your front lines. All in all, well worth those three extra points. Another thing that has gone up by three points is the Koenig Generator ship. The values of the fray are in uh, blue, that shouldn't have been the case because I looked it up and it hasn't actually changed, uh, but it does get both Volt, uh, veteran Voltmeisters and Voltaic Deck Sweepers, being a Teutonic uh, class uh, ship I suppose. Um, they do up the points for th uh, with three, but overall this one is better in assault than it was before because uh, the way the of, or the way that those two rules stack. There was also a tweak to the named variant, everything that was said about the König can be said about this one as well, but this one is the one now with priority signals and that used to be command codes, so the Tirpitz and the Terra Marina, uh, Mariana are the ones that have just swapped place really in terms of their special abilities. Next up we have the Ragnarok, that one loses an extra dice by losing lightning assault but does gain a bit of extra oomph because the wolves of the sea are now changed that they can also shoot 
with all of their weapons while they're being crippled. So it's slightly less relevant for this particular ship because it could only really support with a heavy vault gun battery for the other one. But overall, not a, not a lot has changed for this one. And if you want to, you can give it some extra oomph still in assault using the Voltaic Deck Sweeper upgrade for plus five points per model. And you can also ex escort it with four extra tokens now. So if you go for a very fully upgraded Ragnarok Heavy Reaver, that's still a scary little thing to be facing because it still hits like a freight train. Mustn't forget it has a fury generator. And uh, yeah, that's going to really, really hurt, especially if it is given four extra escorts. In addition, if you give it four extra escorts and then you escort it with some Hoth Corvettes, this can get to really ludicrous plus 50, uh, 15 uh, ADV and 13 SDV as well, making it an even tougher cookie to crack as well. But uh, yeah, that's not too hard because of its low amount of hull points. But its very high potential in defense means that uh, yeah, you can render some uh, weapons absolutely useless against it. The named variant has gone up by 5 points, not that big a deal, it can also take some extra escorts. Much that has been said about the Reaver applies here, but it is a cheap upgrade for something for Devil's Own Luck and Focused Gunnery, so all in all, good thing. It also gains Disciplined Crew now, um, which is nice. One model that really needed help and has gotten it is the Stark Imperium Sky Fortress. At its 325 points it was way too expensive for uh, for what it did. Um, however, there has been a few tweaks. It overall loses out quite a bit in Assault because it now only gains plus one on its fray and it used to get four extra because of Lightning Assault. Uh, but it does did gain Luftlancer Assault instead, so it can Assault within four inch and gain full, uh, within six inch rather than four. Um, and it gains the Voltaic quality when doing so, so that's a good thing. However, don't expect it to get into Assault range fast, because the speed has been toned down a bit. It's gotten minus one speed in both brackets. All in all though, a change that is well worth it. Um, the Stark Imperium with its low citadel got... Uh, the balloon got popped away too fast, and it can't really hide itself anywhere because of the aerial keyword. And Ironically, aerial keyword is not a good thing if you're a carrier, because the neat thing about carriers is that you can hide them behind some rocks somewhere, and you can't do that if you're an aerial unit. So, yeah, well-deserved point drops for this unit. We see a similar story for the uh, Prince Eugen special name variants for minus 55 points. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's also a, a good thing to have. And it can be given Richtenhof's Flying Circus still, so you can have a bit more Assault, should you so desire, on, uh, on this one. Uh, also comes with the Luftlancer Assault baseline now, so that makes uh, the Richtenhof's Flying Circus less of a big deal. But then again, the points drop is more significant. A ship with more uh, interesting options now is the Tempelhof fleet carrier. It still clocks in at 255 points. Its fray was increased by one, but overall loser for uh, uh, assault that, that has been nerfed. But the more interesting option is now the Tempelhof Blitzen pattern. Uh, it used to just replace all of your SRS tokens with uh, five slash three Blitzenhofs. Um, but the downside to it is you don't want to send uh, bombers out on their own. They need some regular SRS support. And so you're always sort of forced to take an extra Conrad to tag along with it just to give you some extra SRS tokens to uh, take the intercepts on them rather than on your uh, more fragile bombers. Now it's been changed. It's a 4-2-4-2, so half of your SRS tokens are swapped out to bombers, greatly increasing its total throughput, but that does come at a not insignificant 55 points. So uh, I'm curious to see what people are going to be doing with this one. The Valhalla Fast Dreadnought only plus two in uh, the fray, which is two dice less than you would expect from its mass value, but largely compensated by Voltaic Deck Sweeper, so all in all, not bad. There's been some weird shenanigans with the Shock Rocket battery. There is no reason not to swap that one out for a heavy Volt Gun battery for free, although I suppose it's slightly fewer weapons that you have to upgrade to heavy Shock Rocket batteries if you want to take that point. So it is a minor points drop in uh, if you want to go for those upgrades, which is good, I suppose. Can't wait to uh, until that model actually is released. The Zeppelin Aerial Dreadnought has gotten a similarly impressive 
twi minus 25 points cost reduction with the same speed reduction like we saw with the Stark Imperium and the same modest bump in fray that we saw for that one as well. Um, so all in all, it's uh, it still pretty much does what you expect at a cheaper points cost at a bit of an expensive speed. So not the end of the world. I actually prefer it this way because, uh, yeah, as before, mm, if you wanted to get into close uh, range, that was usually, or that's something that usually had to be done through uh, the Iron Skies Prussian battle uh, uh, fleet, and yeah, that's more more readily accessible. So I consider the Zeppelin aerial dreadnought to be buffed in two different ways, actually. The Arminius frigate hasn't really changed. Um, it's pretty much the same as before. Um, this is mentioned in blue, but I don't think it has to be because that is not new. That was always an option before as well. Um, slight hits to assault capabilities, but really if you were assaulting with them, uh, it was a bit of a desperate gamble there. The Augustus Bombard Cruiser has been tweaked slightly. Their assault value is just down. There's no compensation whatsoever. But again, these are the type of boats that were never supposed to be assaulting in the first place, so no, good riddance, I say. What has been changed, though, is that the uh, heavy bombardment rule now replaces the old heavy uh, firepower that they used to have, which means that they can still act like they did before without any real changes. The Blucher, all in all, loses one dice in uh, the whole thing, um, which is a shame, makes it slightly less efficient to get into assault, but overall, it's not the worst thing to happen. I mean, it can still do a bit uh, at every single distance. It's that generalist chip that you wanted to include, so and uh, I don't think you're going to not take Bluchers if you were taking them before because of that minor adjustment. The ELTS offshore support platform has gotten a minor buff. It is now Advanced Repair Facilities 2 rather than the one it was before. The Ferdinand Advanced Cruiser did get a bit of a significant plus 5 points per model bump, but it lost Elite Crew but gained, uh, gained Voltaic Deck Sweepers instead. All of this comes without any extra fray adjustments though, so all in all it's a bit of a wash whether or not this one is worse or better in Assault. I say it's about the same thing. Um, you can still upgrade it though with Veteran Voltmeisters, should you so desire, at plus 5 points per model. But uh, yeah, they've already gotten a bit more expensive, I say overall these were nerfed a bit. The smallest of the options for the Scandinavians, the Gungir Raider, is uh, increased by 3 points per model, but uh, it does get a very welcome extra hull point. That used to be a 3-3 variant, uh, and now it is a 3-4 variant in its crippled state. So, crippled state no longer is a big deal for the Scandinavian ship, so all in all, for 3 points, I think this is a worthwhile buff to the squadron. The Heidelberg Logistics Battlecruiser hasn't really changed anything, so that's a, that's a rarity. Most of them have been tweaked a bit. And like we discussed at the start, the, he the Hoth Heavy Corvette has now been given acceptable attrition. That means attaching it to a Scandinavian unit is no longer a problem. In fact, I think it's something you're definitely going to want to do, because the Reaver Detachment still allows you to spam it, should you so desire. And with acceptable attrition, I would even go as far as to say that Small units of four Hoth uh, heavy corvettes are going to be very important for Scandinavian players to make sure that those uh, assault orientated ships make it across without getting pummeled by rockets and uh, torpedoes as they go along. The Jotun was uh, a bit overcosted, if you ask me, in the past. Uh, it has gotten a plus one assault upgrade, so you lose one dice compared to the assault compared to what it was before. If you really want to regain it, and then some, you can however upgrade them for Voltaic Deck Sweepers for plus 5 points. The impressive thing though is the fact that they've gained an extra hull point in their battle ready state, which pretty much comes for free, so yeah, that's a very, very good deal. The Conrad is one of those ships that hasn't really changed. Um, it is impacted by the changes to the assault, but then again, assaulting with your Conrads probably was never really the intention. The Loki Shadow Raider hasn't changed at all yet. I think it's a bit of a missed opportunity, but again, I think there's going to be an update for uh, Scandinavians one, once that box actually gets released.
The Malus anti-air destroyers have been bumped up by one point per model. That's not the big nerf. The big nerf comes in the fact that they're only allowed to have two additional models at a cost of 46 points. That's something that I tried out before. A unit of six Malus is just a license to kill anything in the first turn if you're player A. And uh, that's because those feeling autocannons have such amazing support values that they are just a bit too good if uh, in large quantities. So actually well deserved nerf for that one. Uh, the one that did not get nerfed is the Nashturm, well it also got nerfed but it doesn't feel it that much. It now is allowed to take two fewer models but that is the Nashturm flak frigate. You used to be able to field them in squadrons of eight and with the veerlings that was just a ridiculous amount of shots. Next up we have the Odin Reaver, not a lot of uh, or changes here, plus one to assault, though this is one of the ships that are meant to assault, and can take Voltaic deck sweepers for plus five points per model if you so desire as well, but overall nothing earth shattering. The Reiter Flak Cruiser isn't one of those ships that are meant to support, uh, to assault it seems, no changes in assault value so they feel lightning. Um, the loss of lightning assault quite badly. The Schaumburg Escort Cruiser, however, is clearly made to assault. They gain plus one, but again, that is a small nerf overall compared to what it did before in assault. Sigimer destroyers were absolutely godlike in uh, their previous version. They were only 36 points per model, that's been upped to 40. The Volt Gun batteries shoot really, really well, and th those were some pretty big dice pools as well. They've also not gained anything for the loss of lightning assault but they did get voltaic deck sweepers uh, instead and seeing how v lightning assault was only one dice anyway for these ships i think they're better off with voltaic deck sweepers instead so they definitely are one of those units that are buffed when it comes to assault with these recent changes the Totem is still a very bonkers unit once you were able to get into point blank range and uh, it's now one point extra clocking in at 45 points per model and they've gained Voltaic deck sweepers with an extra boost to uh, Frey as well, uh, meaning that they are at the same value as the Sigimer are. And you can still upgrade them to Veteran Voltmeister rule for plus three points a model. If ever there was a unit you you want to select to come in via unexpected arrival and then have Anna von Malberg overwriting their penalty, this is the one. Feel free to experiment with it, thank me later. The big platform wasn't really changed. The Volsung Strike Cruiser is one of those ships that actually has gotten Voltaic Deck Sweeper instead of uh, Lightning Assault. It's a bit of a wash between the two of them. You can swap it out for a Scandinavian fleet as well, but if you're in a Scandinavian fleet it doesn't gain Wolf of the Sea per se. So um, I think the Scandinavians have got stronger choices for their ships. Uh, I'm not sure if the Volsung is the, the right class for them. But overall, this ship has remained largely the same. The small Zrin battle bla uh, platform hasn't changed really, but what is new, completely new, is the Einherjar Vitruvian Colossus, which is the Scandinavian Colossus coming in as well. It seems to be, like, it's a bit of a mix between a Hochmeister and a Metzger, because it comes equipped with the Übervolt Veerling in one hand, that's an empty hand if uh, you're uh, looking at a Hochmeister, by the way, and it comes with the Colossus Great Weapon, which was that new entry as well, uh, with a slightly different dice in it as well, and comes with a Blitzschlag, so it is allowed to strike twice with it, should it so desire. So I think there's going to be an extra part that has to come on it and maybe some other extra parts uh, to go on it as well to change out uh, things to make it look a bit more Scandinavian than before, but we'll see. Other big changes compared to Hochmeisters are things like it has a shield generator with mass 3, that is quite a bit extra, and that will probably compensate for the fact that they have such low ADV and SDV. Um, Wolves of the Sea is also there, so you can probably do a bit of a cheeky little assault afterwards, should you so desire, because Sornhau is a rule that also helps you in assault. All in all, solid entry, slight variant for the Hochmeisters, who therefore lost their ability to be included in Scandinavian battle fleets. The Fenrir hasn't really changed, I actually said no change, which surprises me because most of these hunter submarine units were reduced in the amount of models that you could take in most other Orbats, and they haven't in the Imperium. That almost feels like a bit of an, uh, an omission. 
The Hochmeister Vitruvian Colossus was only changed slightly. It can change its Spy Hunter Great Weapon for a Colossal Hand Weapon. Um, but they gain the Kranschslag Great Maul rule instead. The Kranschslag Great Maul gives uh, the Colossal Hand Weapon the devastating quality, and when you do both of those things, nothing really has changed compared to what they were, uh, were before. And like we discussed at the start of the video, the rules are cleaned up for this model. It's one of the few bots that can still do the double run through the Blitzschlag. So yeah, still worth considering, if not the most expensive bot in the game, it is still highly efficient. The Metzger got the slightest bit of nerf imaginable, but hasn't changed much otherwise. Uh, of course the nerf to its assault value, but Frey 5 means that you weren't assaulting with that thing anyway. The chance for a counter attack was way too big as it was. But it no longer ignores the Guardian generators with its Donnersturm assault. Again, cheeky little uh, buff to the crown found in, uh, in this Orbat. And as I said when we were discussing the weapons, the Jaeger Aerial Fast Destroyer has received a heavy nerf because the Rüdiger Auto Cannon was nerfed so much. It has lost one dice in support, but when you've only got two dice in support anyway, that means that it's a reduction by 50%. Uh, so yeah, quite a big deal. It also used to have Giant Slayer, allowing you to reroll blanks if you were shooting at mass 3 ships, but that has now been changed for Pack Hunter. Uh, that means that the Heavy Sturmklaue though can get to some uh, absolutely impressive numbers uh, when it is uh, able to get into point blank range, so I would still consider fielding the Jaeger fast destroyers anyway. When it comes to the Kriegsturm Assault airships, they've lost 5 points, I didn't make the remark here, but they've lost 5 points, which is a good thing. And the Übervolt Veerling was actually buffed, so uh, yeah, I hope to see more of those medium balloons and that not everyone was just spamming the small ones, uh, like I said when I was discussing the weapons. The Munich Aerial Destroyer. That's the one that feels the nerf to the Rüdiger Auto Cannons the most. I mean, I've uh, it it has gone down in points, three points per model. But when you think about it, if you pile everything together with the four unit, the four models it has in the unit, you're paying 156 points for a single 20 dice attack that has gunnery, reroll blank, voltaic, and sustained. Which means you're going to be rerolling quite a lot of things, and the efficiency will be high. But I'll be honest, I think that is quite a hefty point cost for uh, for something um, that uh, that costs that much. Um, that, even some of the frigate units uh, manage to get higher numbers than that, and they're not nearly as vulnerable as these ships. Um, maybe it would be nice if these actually got something like uh, unexpected arrival that would bring them in line with the Nuremberg heavy airships that did not really get any changes, apart from the fact, of course, that the Übervolt Veerling is a free upgrade still, and that is better than it ever was before. It would also mean that the two Bavarian units sort of have the same deal, where they are dropping out of the skies unexpectedly. But again, the throughput of the Munich Aerial Destroyer is significantly nerfed. And then finally the Valkyrie Hunter Altar, which stands out in the fact that it has not been changed because it can still take up to four additional models. And that means a unit of six of them with Veerling Otto Cannon, that's, that's pretty good in its own right, but then on top of that you're talking about eight Sturmklaue that can stack together and that can also get really, really, re no sorry, not eight. There's two per model for six, so that's 12 of them stacking together. That can get a bit ridiculous as well, so I wouldn't be surprised if that got changed to just be plus two extra models in the near future as well. All in all, that was it though. Uh, that's the major changes to the Imperium. Again, there were the biggest changes were pretty much to their assault phase. Uh, things that are good at assaulting are still pretty good at assaulting, same as before, but some of the stuff that were perhaps not deservedly so good at assault no longer are and uh, yeah, that's the major takeaway from this one there's even some things that come out on top some things that are just slightly worse overall though I don't think it really changes the faction identity too much assault is still something that the faction overall does very very well it's just that not every single ship in the lineup is going to do it well that's it for me I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel for the future updates, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!